Dr. Heinen, we're so glad to have you here. The Henry Jackson Society asked you to write this study, the parameters of what an agreement could look like. AJC is co-sponsoring with Henry Jackson a tour through Europe to talk in different capitals. Do you have the feeling that there's an impulse to settle at any price or that people understand the technical difficulties involved of trying to forge this agreement? I think that they all understand that this will have far-reaching con uh, consequences, this deal, whether it's a successful or not. And I, I don't think that they want to do a bad deal as such. But uh, devil is always in the details of the deal. And therefore, it's an important that at this point of time, when we look at the other deals which have been here, either with Iran or with other countries, very often they had two, three troubles. One is that they were not accurately enough specified. So there was un ambiguities in, in implementing them. And the other thing was that it was not clear always, you know, the red lines and milestone, what the other party has to do at mm -hmm. certain point of time in order to get the benefits. And it's important that this agreement is written in such a way that we minimize those and we minimize also the unknowns because this is at the same time the risk assessment when you select those, pa uh, those uh, parameters. So they have, they know that this is a a, a, a tremendous task and they want to do a good job. But agreement, you need two parties to agree. And both parties have to see the benefits. And in this particular case, Iran, I think, is asking, in my view, very unrealistic uh, enrichment capabilities. They are not technically and economically justified. So how to explain to them that it's not in their interest to proceed this way, that there's an other route, which particularly with the longer term is much more beneficial to them. Particularly the enrichment is a very sensitive technology. There's not a big difference whether you produce enriched uranium for peaceful purposes or whether you produce it for military purposes. And the other fact is that uh, when you uh, produce a nuclear material like uh, enriched uranium for nuclear weapons, normally it has to be enriched to the isotope 235 up to 90 percent uh, if you use it for military purposes. If you use it for, as a fuel for power plants like a pusher or the reactors here in Germany, you enrich it only to th three or four. 4% enrichment level. But the problem comes from the fact that once you have done 4% enriched uranium, actually you have done half of the work to get to the 90%. And therefore, the step time-wise, when you go from 4 to 90, is a very short. It can be only weeks or even days if you have enough centrifuges. So this is not anymore cup half full, cup half empty. It's just a glass where someone has taken a small sip. So if you want to switch from peaceful production to military production, changes are very quick and difficult to detect. So and this is the reason why the international community is uh, concerned about it. And certainly it has an impact on the North Korea. If Iran gets this uh, uh, is allowed to do enrichment, in spite that it has been in non-compliance of its in international undertakings. This sets uh, quite a precedent for the precedent for the non-proliferation regime. This will have an impact to North Korean solution, but it will have also impact to some other countries like South Korea, which may, for a number of reasons, make its own enrichment. So it would be very hard to deny uranium enrichment from. South Korea, when Iran has it under this kind of circumstances. So. But I think it's a big mistake if we think that, you know, we do, I hear every now and then uh, trade offs that, you know, actually we should not be so hard on these centrifuges. Let them have a little bit more centrifuges, but ask them to help on ISIS. That will be, I think, a historical mistake because 
ISIS is a tremendous problem. It's difficult to get rid of it. But uh, what you agree on this nuclear agreement, this is going to stay a long time there. So ISIS problem is solved, but then you have a bigger number of centrifuges for a long, long time. So uh, I think that uh, it is right, as many of the negotiators say, that this Iran nuclear dossier negotiation is only that let's keep it simple and clear and solve that one. And then we solve these other issues in other forum. And perhaps this will help a little bit to that, but uh, keep focused.